Welcome to this video on the Land Guardian install process. My name is Dara Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netforge Technologies. So just before you download the software, some hardware recommendations. So we do recommend the dual core processor, 4 gigabytes of memory, a CD-ROM drive for the software installation, and 300 gigabytes of storage space. Now you can use smaller storage, it just means that the older data will be deleted once the system disk is full. At a minimum, we require two network adapters. One is used for a management interface, and the second interface is used for what we call the sensor. So you could use a PC or you could use a server. Just make sure it's got this hard these hardware requirements. Once you've got a system assigned to, the, to this project, please visit www.netforgetechnologies.com Click on Download Trial and then select the ISO option. You will then download a single file. And if you don't, if you don't have an application for burning ISO files, just Google free ISO burner or use your favorite search engine to, to download a ISO burner application. So where does this fit on your network? Well, in this case here, we've got a we've got a PC. We've got two network cards shown shown here down, down the bottom right hand side. One network interface card, so it's the purple one here, is connected into, it's shown here, connected into the core switch. But that network ca connection can plug in anywhere. So this is the, the interface that's used to connect to the LAN Guardian. The critical connection here is the red one. So this is connected into the core switch as well. But on the core switch, we're going to configure monitoring or spanning. So install the software and plug in the two network adapters. Again, the purple one here, shown as the management interface, that can plug in anywhere on your network. The red one here, that needs to plug into your core switch. Okay, let's take a look at the installation process now for the LAN Guardian system. Okay, we're now going to install the LAN Guardian software onto my server. So I put in the CD and just boot up the server using the CD. Check on the console, you should start to see some text scrolling past. And this is just the initial boot up process. It's not installing any software yet. It's just booting up to give us a menu. If you don't see the, the system booting up, you might want to check the boot priority on the system. Just make sure that it's choosing the CD-ROM first. The software is initially installed at the console. Once the software is installed, we will then go to a web browser just to do the final configuration. Okay, so we now have some options to choose here. So the first thing is that we want to continue with the installation. We we'll just type in yes. Now, depending on how many disks are available in your system, the next option here to choose is to what disk to install the LAN Guardian software on. Now, word of warning, the, the, this install will wipe the disk. It doesn't require any Windows to be installed beforehand or any other operating system. The LAN Guardian includes its comes with its own operating system, so it will take over the entire server or PC. So I've just got a single disk in this system, which is AD0, and I just press return. So we're just a warning here, are we sure we want to continue? Just type in yes. So it now installs the actual LAN Guardian operating system and all the applications onto the disk. So the next piece here is, is, is important. It's found two network, two network interface cards on this server. So if they're labeled here as EM0 and EM1. Both interfaces are connected. So what it's asking me to do here is to choose the management interface. So I'm going to leave it on the default. It's EM0. I'm going to give it an IP address. So this is an IP address on my network. LangArnian must run with a fixed IP address. Set the default the net mask and set the default gateway. So it's now configuring the second interface as a sensor port. And that's the installation completed. So it's now asking me to log on to the web GUI at HTTPS 192.168.136.20. So I just need to reboot this system now. So 
So it takes a couple of minutes to reboot. The system is, is installed at this stage. Just takes a few, few minutes now for the software to boot up. Okay, once the server boots up, at the console, it should come to a, a logon prompt, as it's shown here. So it just shows login and um, asking you to log on. Now, there's no need to log on to the console. It's just used for some system diagnostics. So what it is prompting us again to do here is to go to our browser and HTTPS to the IP address. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to my browser here. I'm going to try and connect to that system. So just add an exception for that. And we're then prompted to log on. So now we have to configure the system here. Just go through the agree the license terms and set up the initial settings. So the IP address here, we might want to set our DNS server. Our whole network, so default is there to the private address ranges, which are fine on my network here. I don't use a proxy server. If you use a proxy server, you need to use this format, which is IP address, colon, then the port that your proxy server uses. Don't have a proxy here, so we'll just skip that. I'm not going to set up the email just yet, but if you set the, your SMTP server there, from address and a to address, you can configure the LAN Guardian to send you emails should problems arise on your network. I'm going to skip this step myself. Important to check the system clock here that it's got the right time. It can automatically synchronize in an NTP server, you just need to specify that there. Time looks correct to me. So we set a password now for the system. Now remember this is the administrator password, so make sure you take note of this. Maybe put in your password safe. Let's click on next. If you want to get the Active Directory integration working now, just need to specify a user account, a password, and an IP address of one domain controller. With further information on our website around what what requirements the username uh, needs to use, but in summary it just needs to connect to the security logs and the domain controllers. Again, there is a lot of information on our website around permissions, what does it need. You can skip this step and come back to it again, but if you want usernames available from the start, you can, you can fill in the username, password, and IP address right now. Let's click on Next. I'm going to skip it for the time being. So it tells me here that I've got a sensor up and running. The link is up, but I'm not getting any what we call spam traffic. So we have yet to configure the switch to send traffic to the system. So I just got to make sure I, do, I do, to do that next. I configure spam. So I'm now, now asked to log on. So I log on using the password that I just set. And just click login. And that's the installation now complete. Now the second part of this is we need to get spam traffic to the system. You can easily find out your own switch, what commands you need. Just go to your core switch, get to make a model. So like if it's a Cisco 4500, then using your favorite search engine, just either Google or using your own search engine, search for port monitoring or port mirroring, and then to make a model of your switch. You'll find the guides there. We do have other information on our website. If you go to our website, we've got some information around setting up span. But at this stage, the system, the LAN Guardian system is installed and is ready now to, to to accept data from the network.